Whisper really tamed it. It can be a world of serenity, a haven of quiet in a vast forest or a blue lake. And it can also explode. Men who have fished this independent beast call him the meanest, most exasperating fish of the North. There's nothing in the water or out of it that he's afraid of. He is the muskie. Muskie is elusive, and I know of no man better prepared for the muskie chase than my old fishing buddy, Ray Ostrom. Each spring, Ray anchors his houseboat in a quiet cove near Nestor Falls to search for this prize trophy. Hi, Bill. Ray, how are you? Very good. Yeah, I'm glad to see you. I've been waiting for you. How's everything going up there? Well, we've been seeing quite a few, Bill, and uh, lots of follows. This is Ray Ostrom arch enemy of the muskie. Yet the muskie has no greater admirer. He knows its strength and he respects its ferocity. He is not a guide or a native of this wilderness, but a successful Minneapolis businessman who is hooked on the muskie. And he has more than 200 scalps to his credit. I'm ready. Let's go. I'm ready for that fishing too. The chase began up one of the hundreds of beautiful little channels that lace the lake together. There is no best place to begin. The muskie is the most contrary beast that lives in freshwater. He chooses the time of combat and the place. He picks a piece of weeds, a little cove, the deep side of a rock, and that, for most of his life, is home. He's a loner, and he doesn't want anyone else around. He defends his little patch of water fiercely, striking savagely at anything that dares invade it. Doesn't mean he will take a swing at the first lure thrown his way. He strikes only when the mood is on him. He can look for days at a lure dragged across his nose and never touch it. He will ignore, follow it, swirl behind it, knock it up in the air, and never touch the hook. There's only one way to get him, if there is any way at all and that is cast and cast again and again until your arm is ready to come off. It takes a big lure, tough line, to catch a big fish like the muskie. And those lures can weigh a ton at the end of a day's casting. Sometimes it's not just the skill of the fisherman, but actually his physical endurance that puts a man in contact with a muskie. I got a pair of size one. Come on, baby. You don't fish very long in these waters without striking into something, and my first hit was a northern. He's a tough battler, a mean one when he's hooked, but he's not a musky. No freshwater fish is. I got this guy hooked the way I'm going to hook them all, Ray. See how easy it is to yeah. get that baby out of there? Yeah, but that's the only thing you need to grab and use the I almost made it when I looked at it and I saw this. I couldn't believe it. This huge green thing that this is just long. The little bass is jump, oh. jumping along the surface and it comes up and just... I just went off the surface. <laughs> There he is. Sir. See the bass there? Yeah. Oh yeah, and there, there's a, the muskie. Mm -hmm. He's coming up on top now. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh Yeah? Yeah? Mm -hmm. Oh! What a fish. Ray was getting a lot of expert advice from both Mike and me, all of which he wisely ignored. this is something you never see. This 
Well, she isn't quite the beautiful. What are these uncuts on their side there, Ray? Well, these marks, Bill, I would say uh, this fish had just been hit by a big musky somewhere in this area. Boy, this is a beautiful one. Hit. Yeah. See this old tire? Yeah. This one's starting to heal up, but this is a very fresh one here. Well, this is a big fish, Bill. There's a big musky somewhere in this area. Those gashes on the sides of that northern is proof that there's a big musky down there. And on the next cast, something had an almost doubled my rod. But it was a northern again, not a muskie. Man, when you get action around here, you get action. <laughs> Some of these fellows can get up into the weight class of a muskie. Up here, they're a guide's best friend. When the rest of the fishing is slow, there's always a northern around. Now rays into the nest of northerns. They seem to be coming from every direction. A northern likes the same water as a muskie as long as there isn't a muskie there to chew on his sides. We never know. All right. Watch the thing. Ray won his skirmish, but mine is giving me an argument. Oh, that's not what we're looking for, but... Oh, that's... The northern's greed is really his undie. He will hit a lure two, maybe three times on retrieve and come back for more. He hits so hard, sometimes he will drive a lure halfway down his gullet. And once you tie into one, there's not much chance of losing him unless he saws off the line. Ooh, the new one. Watch your hands on those hooks, Rick. I'll tell you, I'll take a couple of these babies any time. That's a nice one. This one is pretty good size. There's some width on his shoulders. On another oh, safari, cool. this hey, might have been considered a fun nice. catch. But he's not our target. But here's an old grandma musky laying here somewhere, too. That's who I'm after. This might eat him. That's who I'm after. This one doesn't have any scars on him. No, oh, no. Fighting northerns could be left for another day. So off we went again, tearing through the inlets, stirring up the blue waters in a green wilderness, looking for the musky. Somewhere in a patch of underwater weeds, in a tiny cove, there had to be a muskie willing to fight a man with a rod and reel. Bill, there's that eagle's nest I was telling you about. Where? Right up there. In, oh, see, look off to the left. There's the eagle sitting in the bush. Oh, oh, oh. Is that a big nest? How big is that nest? Oh, Jesus, at least 10, 12 feet across at the top. You know that uh, an eagle will keep building to his nest, adding to it every year. Sometimes they nest the way as much as a ton. Well, that's a big one, and they keep building it every year. Maybe right? around that point, a muskie lives. Maybe around there is his castle, which he leaves only in the spring when love is on him, and he goes out to spawn. Oh, there's a lot of fish this channel. This channel goes from white fish to and then One of those little ducks would make a tasty snack for a muskie, and often does. Men have fished this independent beast for half a lifetime and got nothing but a sore arm, yet they still come after him. A musky fisherman is a queer breed. He may be the only fisherman in the world who gets excited about not catching a fish. He talks about swirls and follows and splashes with the same reverend other fishermen talk about strikes and catches. Get him over here, Bill. Now we're into another species of Northwoods fish. This time it's a walleye, a beautiful fish with a rich, sweet meat and a Northland gourmet's delight. He's great in the frying pan, but he doesn't have the shoulders or the temper of the muskie. Raise into another walleye, men travel hundreds of miles to find this fish and spend the winter raving about their catch but all he's doing is getting in our way. We want a muskie. Come on, you bugger. But there was no muskie for us this day, so it was back to Ray's palace on floats, and there I was to meet Mike Baranowski, a man who had guided Ray Ostrom in these waters for over 20 years. His enthusiasm to do combat with a muskie is only exceeded by rays. But today, Mike has something to brag about. He's caught a muskie, and a big one, over 40 pounds.
this is what we had come for. This is the Sweetwater Cannibal. The world's record is more than 70 pounds. There are stories of muskie who weigh more than 100 pounds. And just the thought of one that big on the other end of a rod is enough to make a man tremble. His leaps often are the length of his body, six feet sometimes. A big one you will have to kill before you bring him into the boat or he will tear the inside of it apart. That's the muskie. Marked like a tiger, fights like one. Notice the neat condition of Mike's lure box. Just untangling a lure out of that mess ought to earn a man the right to catch a muskie. But who cares about neatness when you can catch a muskie of that size? Mike said he would take us to a spot where he knew we would find the muskie. So we loaded our gear and made a short haul across the wilderness to another patch of water. The world is not overly populated with men who have caught muskie, and it's not clear why a man insists on chasing a fish that eludes him, or just what the challenge really is. The Roman poet Ovid said a man who was unlucky at dice and women might forget his failures fishing. Whatever the reason, we're out to get a muskie. But before we took up the muskie chase again, we decided to do something about lunch and went after some smallmouth bass for the frying pan. This fellow is a fighter championship class in his own weight, and he's a little more receptive to a lure tossed his way. Rate right him ounce for fresh water, and on light tackle, he's a tough opponent. He floods these northern waters and he can keep a fisherman happy and active. We had two reasons for going after the smallmouth. One, the fun of fighting with him, a sort of relief from the pursuit of the muskie. And two, we needed meat for the table for dinner. What we really didn't know was that there was somebody else interested in smallmouth for lunch. Ray had a smallmouth on, no hurry to land him. And out of nowhere he came, a muskie the guy we'd been chasing for two days. That big guy sailed in from under the boat, snatched the small mouth hooked on Ray's lure, and took off. Ray let the muskie take the small mouth, waiting until he could slam the hook into him. But the muskie had the bass sideways in his mouth and wouldn't turn him so Ray could hit him with one of the hooks. It seemed it was hours while the muskie played with a small mouth and drove us crazy. Then suddenly, as insolently as he had hit, he opened his big mouth, let the small mouth go, and swam nonchalantly away. I've heard the story. Well, here, look at He's good all the way up into here. And he's just here. He's just here. Now that's no minnow. That's a nice size smallmouth. But he was hardly more than a canopy for that muskie. He almost skinned that fish. The muskie obviously didn't need the smallmouth for lunch. He was just in the mood to kill. This is why they call him the Sweetwater Cannibal. Well, if that muskie didn't want smallmouth for lunch, we did. And there's no finer table than the side of a lake in the far north woods. You don't need to tip a head waiter to get a table in this suburb. Just a boat and motor and a rod and reel. The food would make a French chef bitter. 
he couldn't match a Northwoods guide with a stringer of fresh fish from a cold lake. The recipe is simple, a campfire, deep grease in an old skillet, some flour and a little salt and pepper. Then wait for the fish to turn gold. Add a can of beans, some potatoes, a good beverage, and a man can forget for a time that he hasn't yet caught a muskie. Our bellies were full, but the musky stringer still was empty, so it was back to casting. Finally, I got one. I got the first strike. He followed the lure maybe a dozen yards. Then, in one quick, vicious swirl, he struck. I could tell by the hit it wasn't a huge beast, but it was a muskie. No other fish strikes like that. Even in the lightweight class, a muskie is a beautifully proportioned fish. The markings, which are so clearly defined out of the water, are truly this killer's camouflage. A muskie of any size should be considered a trophy, but this one wasn't the size I had wanted to hang on the wall. So we turned him loose for another day in another year. It was back to casting again and drifting, one spot to another. is a thrill that every fisherman should experience. Ray needed some of the moves of a contortionist to keep up with him. The boat didn't seem to scare the muskie when he came after Ray's lure but now he hates the sight of it and is doing his best to make for the bottom. But Ray is an old pro at handling the muskie and is about to add another scalp to his credit. Pliers are the tool no muskie fisherman goes without. A finger or thumb could get badly mauled in that cavern of spikes. Proper removal of the lure saves fingers and fish. Now that's a better fish. Not as big as the one that grabbed Ray's smallmouth, but he's keeping size. Things were beginning to look brighter. So Mike moved us back out to the edge of the weed bed where the action had started. On my second cast, I got another follow. The muskie strutted right up to the boat, then just sneered. Ray and I tried moving the lures and figure eights at the side of the boat, and I swear he laughed at us, then swam slowly back into the weeds. Mike moved in closer to the weed bed for another swing at him. Twenty-five years of musky fishing had put Mike hot on the trail of feeding fish. We were no longer casting in the blind. We had found the home of the musky, and now we were stalking. 
The muskie made one teasing pass at Ray's lure and Ray almost jumped in after him. Here is a once in a lifetime feeling that puts a fisherman's heart in his mouth to see this magnificent brute so close, not knowing whether he'll strike or not. The muskie swung back past the boat and both of us go to work on him, trying to tease him back. Or he very nearly got me because I set him so hard that he almost knocked me out of the boat. And this time, I leap her. He hit the water like a hog. The muskie knows every trick in the book. He will sound into a weed bed, try and run under the boat, or lunge across the surface with his head in an effort to dislodge the lure. It's given to the fisherman one mistake and your fish is gone. This one has some real bulldog in him. Maybe not as big as the one that Mike caught, but he's got a temper and he's smart. One inch of loose line and he can throw that lure back to the boat. But I'm not a fisherman. One doesn't want to give up, but I won the battle, and it was worth the fight. <laughs> well, congratulations. Great old boy. Nice to this, I'll tell you. Well, now they, oh, they don't Look at the teeth on that baby. Oh, teeth yeah. like razor blades and a mouth like a cavern. No wonder everything that lives in this water is terrified of him. This is the sweetwater cannibal. This is why men will fish for weeks until they're through rain, cold, and sleep for just one tussle with this beast. He isn't going to win any prize for size, but he's big enough to space on my wall. And this is what I had come for. It wasn't easy to leave, but a man can't spend all his life chasing muskie. But if you want to give it a try, there's still that monster back there who chewed up Ray's smallmouth. <laughs>